Welcome back to the Missouri Nature Minute. I'm Colton at CFM and I wanted to be outside today but it's a little windy for my sound equipment so I thought we'd do an indoor video and talk about collections. So anyone could have a collection, right? Um, it can be many different types of things. I thought of a few, you know, that some people might do and that would be like pressed plants or a bug collection, flowers, rocks, seeds, uh, some people take pictures, and their philosophy is take only pictures, leave only footprints. In a lot of places, that's all you can do. So that's a great way to keep a memory of somewhere you've been. Um, other ideas, I know a friend that collects duck decoys. So that's a nature kind of a collection or original nature artwork. And maybe even uh, seashells or old turkey calls. Uh, there's a lot of different options available for us here in the nature world on what we might want to collect. But I think the most important thing that I learned in grad school about having a collection is to make sure you keep good information on where your specimen came from. So as an insect collector, uh, I'll show you what my data usually looks like. So this is the label that I normally use. I'm going to go ahead and open some of these boxes, so if you don't like anything with more than six legs, you might want to turn away now. So here I've got some insects that I've collected more recently that I haven't had a chance to uh, put into my uh, bigger, more organized boxes yet, and so a lot of these still have handwritten labels. It's good to use, you know, typed labels in case other people can't read your handwriting, which is tough for me, as I'm sure it is for lots of folks. Um, so here's what some of these look like. And to me, it's very cool to look at these specimens and remember, uh, you know, who I was with, uh, whether I was out collecting with friends or whether I was on a trip with my family. And I saw one of these and I picked it up. Um, you know, some of these here in this box are, a lot of these are from Arkansas and Missouri. Um, some are even from Kansas. And in this box over here, I've got some from uh, actually up in California. So it's very cool to remember the stories around the things you collect. So. In these two boxes are my two favorite types of insects. Beetles represent so many species that they outnumber almost all other living things combined. Insects together outnumber all other plants and animals combined as far as species are concerned. And one of the largest groups of those are the scarab beetles. So some of those that you might know are like the, uh, the dung beetles or june beetles and maybe even some of you have been lucky and seen one of these giant Hercules beetles. And then uh, one of my favorite quotes actually is about beetles, and that is, the creator must have had an inordinate fondness for beetles. And that's because there are just so many species that it's astounding. And then the other, I feel like moths are underrepresented. Lots of people will look at these and think, oh, those are such pretty butterflies. And it's like, actually, they're moths. So here on this side are giant silk moths. So they're in the same family as the moths that actually produce silk. So if anyone's ever worn silk, that's actually produced by the caterpillar of a silk moth. And then this group over here are the sphinx moths or hawk moths. And those will be the ones that you'll see around your flowers like at dawn and dusk and maybe even sometimes during the daytime. But they look just like hummingbirds when they fly around. I hope this has given you some inspiration. Please share your collections in the comments or if you came up with any ideas. And please like and share this video. And, and we hope you will enjoy some responsible recreation in the Missouri outdoors this week.